Well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, just to contribute a little bit with all the jet lag and all the sleepiness around 5 p.m. already, uh, we're going to talk about um, time series prediction algorithms and interesting stuff. So this talk is about um, capacity planning using um, just flat um, modules that you can get from OpenStack that are in your key salometer. And we're talking about a little bit about uh, how you can use that data to, to actually apply some rating to your metering so you can do show back, charge back, and stuff like that. So let's move on. OK. Let's go a little bit through the agenda. We're going to talk about a little bit about how it's the metering chaos that is generated generally in the enterprise world when they actually know that they needed to be measuring all your cloud since a couple of years or months ago. And they just realized in time that they don't have the needed information to actually take wise choices about what hardware they should buy, um, if their flavor strategy is okay to what they're doing. And maybe in some uh, public clouds that happening too. So we're talking about a little bit about that. After that, we're going through um, the mechanics of rating all the metering using Cloud Kitty. That is actually to an, an OpenStack project right now. Um, I'm going to put myself out there and try a live demo with the platform to show how you can use those tools to do some advanced monitoring, do uh, showback and chargeback. And after that, we're going to talk about capacity planning, uh, capacity management, and how you can use a capacity planning API that we're going to put upstream, open source it, so you can use it and collaborate to it um, to actually do it, do capacity planning, and kind of try to predict the future in some manner. And after that, I'm going through a capacity planning module demo, okay? So, the metering chaos, some common mistakes that we as cloud operators, so we as cloud implementators do when we deploy a cloud or create a cloud inside an enterprise. Uh, you will so surprise about this mistakes that we do. So um, I'm going to talk about a little bit with my experience in, into clients and my experience uh, when I worked at uh, Mercado Libre building the cloud. Um, what were the common mistakes that we did back there? So what's generally, yeah, there's a lot of reasons for a company or an enterprise to try to adapt the cloud. Um, but Mainly, there's a couple of reasons that are common. Um, in all the cases, for example, the upper management are pressuring to have a cut strategy. Uh, sometimes they have a reason. Sometimes they're not. They just want to close just because. Um, but mainly, you're trying to, to do something with the cloud in the enterprise. Depending on your workload, probably your company, for example, that was our case in Mercado Libre and our case in so many clients that we see. You try to get features into production. You try to re reduce the time to market. You try to get faster to deploy applications. So maybe the infrastructure team is getting slower to deliver that infrastructure. Um, they need a code strategy, a strategy that is as dynamically as possible so they can get all the infrastructure that they need. Okay, so. The other reason is that that team need, for example, uh, a way to control the infrastructure uh, seamlessly in, in a way that they can do it centralized, automi automated, and all the stuff that you already know because you're here. So there's a couple of things that actually happens in, for example, public clouds or public clouds talking about methering and rating and show and chargeback. Uh, Sometimes in a lot of private clouds, for your surprise, uh, they start with a fixed price model. They start, for example, with a model of some packs with CPU and RAM, um, just with a fixed price. They did publish to the client, and maybe that model fits for them at the beginning. So 
the, the, the billing model and the chargeback model uh, is based on a model that is quota based. And in public clouds, private clouds, sorry, um, probably they start with no metadata at all. Uh, they just deploy the crowd because they need it like we did. And there's some measuring with some basic tools. They have legacy tools to know if a server is getting saturated with IOPS or throughput or no or wherever. But they actually don't know if the cloud is going to be used like it's supposed to, or they don't know if the cloud is, is, is used uh, in an optimized manner. So, what are the consequences? Your infrastructure team is running well with your budget, okay? Uh, they always asking for servers because the developers or uh, the guys that consume the infrastructure always need more resources, and you really don't know if that is happening uh, because the need is right or because you have a bad flavor strategy, you're buying the wrong hardware, uh, you're not doing things right because you actually don't know what's going on in your cloud yeah, because you don't have any metrics. So that happens a lot, yeah? And another thing that actually going on is, for example, it's a pretty common in private cloud infrastructures that actually don't have advanced measuring, is probably you have a lot of servers with instances from 1992 from a developer that actually launched an environment and it's sitting there doing nothing. And it's consuming resources that you cannot allocate to a project that actually needs them. Uh, that's a huge, huge problem in private clouds. We hit it every day and it's a big concern. So that's one of the reasons that you have to measure a lot. So another is that you're probably missing clients because your pricing or your, your log model, your, your quota based model of charging them is really doesn't fit in. Uh, so they probably move to a paper use model because they need a more dynamic way of spinning up things and getting charged for it. Um, the worst of them, and you actually probably, like we did, losing money and you don't know about it. So you end up like this guy, so you don't know nothing, yeah? So you don't have to keep calm like John here. Uh, you have to worry about it. So because you're going to need some way, some way to measure things, some way to defeat that white walkers you have in your, in your infrastructure. So let's talk about the, um, the default or, or the suggested infrastructure architecture, sorry, that we deploy uh, in our clients and internally to actually get the measures that we need to do monitoring, showback, and chargeback. Uh, you guys probably are related with the, with the single meter architecture. So it's composed mainly by um, collector, yes. So that collector is responsible actually to pushing the, the notifications and that, no, and that methods that the collector uh, receive uh, from, the, from the RPC uh, notification baths are collected by the notification, the compute, and the centralizations of Sailometer. Um, that mainly the compute runs on the hypervisor, uh, takes care of asking, for example, libbert of about what's going on actually with the instance. So how many IOPS, uh, what's, the th what's the traffic, how is the CPU consumption? And you have the, the centralization that is responsible actually to collect all the, all the metrics from the hypervisor level, um, mainly using SMP drivers, and you have the notification nation that is responsible to do all the transformations um, and all the transfer that you need to do, for example, to create custom metrics or to do math operations to a metric to match, for example, your collection time. The cellometer collector, then um, what he does is to push all those metrics 
into the Gnocchi API. Uh, for those that does not know the Gnocchi API, I'm going to talk a, bit, a little bit more about it in a couple of minutes. So the Gnocchi API has two components. One is indexer, when it has the, all the consistency about uh, what resources are created, what are the resources ID, all the metrics ID, and all the metadata. And then you have the metric D component that is actually the responsible of processing all that metrics uh, using all the rules that you create actually to perform aggregation or what query do you do to the Gnocchi API. Generally, what we do is to deploy a, a Ceph cluster to, to actually hold all the, all the meters because the raw, the raw measures and the processed measures uh, uh, actually resides in Ceph. It's the most developed driver uh, backend for Gnocchi right now. Uh, and it's the best performance by the time. So that's what we, that's what we use right now. And of course, on the, on the database, you have a store all, all the all the IDs or all the metrics and all the metadata. So, okay. For those that doesn't know actually much about Gnocchi, uh, Gnocchi is a multi-tenant series database as a service or resource as a service and that is basically used um, to do what, the, for example, InfluxDB does right now as a standalone. Uh, it's kind of a time series that's based as a service with a pretty much developed API and a really tight integration with Celometer uh, that actually it's performing pretty great right now. And it's responsible, of course, uh, of performing all the, all the metrics transformation and, and queries to, to, to get all the data that you need when, you, when you're asking for a specific metrics from the cloud. So why Gnocchi? Because MongoDB doesn't prove to scale a lot. Um, I am candidly, um, a couple of months ago, we ran a, a Sailor Media query with MongoDB backend. Um, by now, I doesn't have the result yet. So, um, MongoDB not quite my tempo. That's why um, Gnocchi came into the picture to replace it as, uh, as the mainly backend, de facto backend for, for telemetry. So what can we do with all the measures that we have right now? So we can use it for whatever you, you, you can. So we can monitor our hypervisors and instances and service since Gnocchi, it's a uh, it's an open API, you can work standalone without Kistion, so you can integrate Gnocchi to push any metric that you want. For example, if you want to push IoT uh, measures to do analytics in Gnocchi, you can do it. Uh, if you have custom software or custom hardware in your infrastructure that you want to use to push metrics to Gnocchi, so you can ladle uh, do a query and have just central point to console the information, you can do it. You can actually create baselines and threshold uh, for alerting purposes because this is integrated with uh, without the age, so you can actually launch alerts uh, based on different uh, policies that you can create that compares your metrics that is pretty useful for pretty dynamic load balancer environments. and. You can associate cost to the metrics that I'm going to talk a little bit deeper about that in a bit. So you can actually transform your static uh, billing model to a uh, most AWS-like uh, per-per-use model. And why not to uh, use it to predict the future uh, for capacity planning and management purposes. So now that I have all the metrics and all that information, how do I ch charge for it? How do I associate costs to that metrics? That's where CloudKitty came in to actually works as a rating model for OpenStack. Um, this is a kind of logical uh, way of how it works. So what it does is all the data that Sailometer collects with all the stations, it get pushed into Gnocchi, like I told you before. And CloudKitty can consume all this 
measures from NeoKey, and you can create rating rules. You can create uh, different uh, cost association based on your own patterns to do whatever you fit your business model to charge for it. So um, that, after that, that gets stored. Uh, right now, it gets stored on the native storage. That is a feature that uh, we committed upstream. Uh, that feature actually, before, uh, it was ending into uh, MySQL databases and the performance was, uh, seems pretty bad when scale. So we kind of developed the native storage feature to store all the rating uh, results uh, on Ceph, like Gnocchi does with all these measures. So to get a little bit more performance. And you have the, all, all the database that actually has all your configuration and rating rules for your business. So, let's get into the live demo. I'm going to show you how you can actually use all this data to show information to your users or to create billing reports or something like that. So, we have a, a pre flying clouder. So, let me in with my really secure password. There is password. And, okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about this particular screen right now. Uh, before, uh, we're going through uh, billing, the billing section, okay? So, this is uh, the, the default Cloud Kitty um, a screen that is integrated into, into Horizon. So, here you can define all your rating rules or your bidding rules, and you can see you can apply different criteria to each metric. For example, we have here uh, a CPU delta metric that has associated a, a flat rule for applying um, a cost to it, and it's going to be, I'm kind of blind after working on IT all these years, so it's going to be around Ten, ten dollar cents for each uh, CPU uh, uh, nanosecond that you use. It's just uh, it's just an example, and you have the ability to create threshold rules. For example, if you have a client, a particular client that has, uh, then you want to apply some discount, or you want to uh, manage uh, separately cost, or you want to apply a, a, a custom rule. You can, you can use threshold rules, and you can, that, you, know, you can use combine it with metadata rule sets in order to uh, differentiate that using any value of the metadata that it's come on every metric. Because every metric on Gnocchi has a lot of metadata, and you can actually define metadata dynamically for each metric, so you can actually later on your, on your billing platform, you can use that metadata to apply different costs, apply another workflow for that particular metric in particular. For example, if you have an, av an availability zone that has dedicated hardware, or has another speed, or better storage, or whatever, you can use that metadata that is pushing to the metric into Gnocchi to handle a differentiation on the price later. So, with all this data, you can actually, after that, create, for example, some reports that you can see here. There's a couple of demo reports right now. So they're going to show, I don't know if there's cost associated with it, but as you can see, you can create uh, different reports to show what it's actually, what tenant is what doing in which hypervisor you can actually define uh, different levels of grouping. In this case, we're grouping per instance, per project. You can do it in a flavor base. You can create different reports based on, uh, on metadata that all the metric has. And with all this information, you can actually create, I don't know if I hit it, uh -huh. Yeah, you can create, as you can see here, you can create charts. Um, 
why you, you, you create charts is because you have all this information that maybe you want to show it besides the report that maybe you want to import that report later on your uh, actually billing platform. For example, you have another billing separated platform, you want to import all the data, you can do it and the report is, is gonna fit you well or you can do it via the API just to retrieve and do a quick integration. But if you want that a user that logs in to a public cloud, um, and maybe you want to show them uh, a quick way to, to view in a friendly form all this uh, billing information, where his man is going, uh, you can create charts related to, to, that met to that metrics in particular. And we, the charts, I want to show a little bit how a chart structure is first. So, okay. Um, this is all the information that you have on Yoki. Um, this is just a, a random interface that we did just to show an example of how you can work with into Horizon to actually get all the data from Yoki. You can do all the groupings to, to basically a group the chart as you can do it grouping on grouping the report. So you can do regular search, uh, regular expression filtering, and you of course you can select the chart type. This can be a pie, can be a can be a line, a comparison, or or many charts. So with all the charts that you create, maybe later you want to create a default dashboard for a final user, or you want to create a dashboard for uh, for example, uh, the board of directors that want to look at it and see what's going on with the cloud, where all the money is going. Um, and after you create a dashboard, I'm going to show just example dashboard at here. Uh, this, this, is, this is a dashboard that is created mainly using um, Angular and uh, high charts. Uh, this have a script. Uh, fancy, fancy things. So here you can interact with all the with all the graphics to enter actually your granularity level. So if you grouped in your your chart like you did with your reports, you can actually go here and interact with the charts to the deeper uh, metric level. So that's the things that you kind of uh, can do if you have all the information. But other thing that you can do that is really, really useful for mainly private clouds, I don't know if public will apply uh, to that model, but you can do advanced monitoring. So Gnocchi left you uh, configure different granularities uh, in order to provide you the information that you need. And if you configure a granularity that is uh, pretty, pretty small, for example, with a sampling of one minute, you can actually kindly kind of do um, real-time metrics or real-time monitoring real, okay? So if I'll go here, for example, and uh, this is a hypervisor chart. I'm going to show the instances there is, there is nicer, so. If I filter here, for example, I have a couple of instances. I really don't see what I'm selecting, so. I can filter here. The time range. Yeah. I'm trying to, I'm to use the provider open stack. Um, yeah. I'm going to filter it, to filter it by day. Okay, there should be some information there, so, you know. Oh, okay, that's right, I'm going to select by month. Okay, great, so you can use all your gnocchi metrics to, besides you do, doing showback and chargeback, you can use it to do some advanced monitoring. Uh, so you can deliver all these panels to your users. And since you can post any metric that you want, you can, if you want, uh, give the users, give the final users the ability to post custom metrics and create custom dashboards. 
Um, this is just an example of how, of how they use it. So here on the cloud overview screen, we kind of have um, two clouds integrated. Uh, one opens a cloud, and the other is an integrated uh, VMware cloud. And what we do here is using the, the capacity planning API that I'm going to show you later, guys, and using all the information that we have with Gnocchi, we create kind of a heat map uh, of which instances are not running good based on thresholds that we define on ODH. Uh, we can create all this graphic so we can quickly see which VM maybe is hitting CPU or hitting uh, not enough RAM. And you can create performance graphic or performance charts that actually are the same framework that actually graphing all the charts that I showed you before. So that's, uh, that's the, the little bit live demo that I wanted to show. So let's move on with the, with the capacity part. And we have later another demo of the capacity planning API itself. So to me there, it's uh, kind of like to predict the future if you have enough uh, information from your cloud, it's really um, doable so you can project uh, to a future how the capacity is going to be consumed or when or your hardware is going to be uh, tapped out. Um, or maybe if you have to, in the future, for example, you can realize that you have to change your flavor strategy because you're buying, I don't know, uh, hardware with a lot, of, uh, a lot of RAM and your users actually are not using it, so you can change uh, your, your flavor strategy based on information that you didn't have before. So um, mainly that's the, the, the Wikipedia definition of capacity planning and capacity management. So that, that, that's what it is to do it, uh, to handle all your resources in a way that are right size so you can be cost effective. So. What's with the, with the capacity planning API uh, that we develop on here in Nouvelle um, basically, basically, as I told you before, it uses all the telemetry infrastructure that you already got uh, on OpenStack. You don't need black boxes or some other things to, 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 to use it. Um, it's fully integrated with Keystone. It's fully working with the B3. So you can actually configure domains and use it for maybe reselling in a public cloud environment. Um, so it's capable, it's capable actually to doing estimation uh, based on, on, on all the metrics. So you can actually know uh, when your hardware is going to get tapped out or when, or, or when you're going to need to buy new hardware so you can do a better planning, hardware planning strategy. So. Another great thing that you can, you can do, is what I want to talk about a little deeper uh, in a couple of minutes, you can use uh, what if simulations scenarios. So you can actually apply, apply variables to your metrics to know if X variable is going to affect in which way to infra your infrastructure. So for example, uh, I don't know, if you have, you know that you're, for example, an e-commerce an e-commerce company, and you're going to go through a Black Friday or whatever, uh, you can actually, based on metrics that you have previously from other years, you can actually apply a simulation model to your current uh, data that you have on Yoki. So you, you can use that in order to know if you're going, for example, to need further hardware resources, or you need to adjust something to your cloud. So, um, simulations, uh, of course, uh, since it's using Gnocchi, you can apply it in a per metric manner. You can apply simulations to a metric in particular. For example, if you have to apply simulation, what if, what if simulation model to the CPU delta uh, metric, for example, you can do it, and you can do it to the memory usage metric in order to uh, basically be very, very granular. Uh, we have, right now, as we speak, uh, a really, really minimalistic front end that we did for Horizon. Uh, that's going to show you in a couple of minutes. Uh, 
So uh, we need a lot of work there. So since we're open sourcing it, uh, all help is welcome. And it will integrate in a future with the age. So when a user defines a capacity threshold, it can work tightly with all the age uh, to, to send you alerts. So this is the, the capacity planning API architecture. Uh, basically, it's, uh, as you can see, it's pretty, it's pretty similar as the show you Cloud Kitty. Um, all the metrics that get collector, uh, collected from Sailometer are stored in Gnocchi. So um, before that, or after that, sorry, uh, the capacity planning API uh, has uh, its processing daemon uh, that is actually the, the responsible to apply all the simulations uh, to the metrics that is actually get done by retrieving all the metrics from the Gnocchi API and applying uh, all the variables that you want on projecting in the time that you want. Um, and you have the capacity planning database where all the configs about all the simulation and all the, the, all the scenarios are stored. And in between, uh, we're storing simulations are um, consulted um, very often or when you just create a simulation and you didn't change any parameter, all the simulations are getting cached on Redis. So you don't, you don't have to wait uh, for Gnocchi to respond every time to your simulation if it's the same, if it's the same every time. And in a future, we're planning to store, um, give the user an ability to store a, a, a fixed simulation, a flat simulation, and to put it in, in, in the Ceph backend uh, so we can actually work uh, more, more like Gnocchi is doing right now. So what we use to create the API, this is uh, a couple of libraries that we use. We use NumPy, we use Pandas to interact with the data, and we use actually stats model to interact uh, with, the, with the data to apply the algorithms. Um, we are testing two algorithms right now. Uh, the algorithm that you use to, to apply the simulations and to do all the scenario testing uh, it's up to you. Uh, it's uh, pre-configurable uh, via the configuration file. So if you want to, to introduce your custom uh, prediction algorithm, uh, it just has to be a time series uh, prediction algorithm so you can actually interact with the Gnocchi data. Uh, you can do it. Uh, if you want to contribute uh, with a custom algorithm that you guys maybe can have, uh, that would be great too. So we're kindly, kindly testing uh, both algorithm, algorithms to um, test which of those uh, generate the, the, the better and most accurate output right now. Um, so to leave it as the default algorithm, uh, so to ship it with the API. Um, as I said before, all, the, all this whole model is implemented with the with stats model. So, I'm going to show you, this, this is a recorded demo since our um, environment is kind of like, kind of like pretty, pretty early. So uh, I'm going to go through and explain a little bit. I don't know if I explain, I can, okay. Okay, so here you have, this is um, the screen that you, we have right now um, on Horizon uh, when you can create uh, your scenarios. These scenarios are going to be uh, simulation scenarios that can have uh, what if models applied to it or can be just flat simulations with uh, a, a standard prediction based on, on how exponentially, for example, uh, a metric grows. Okay, so uh, here you have, for example, uh, uh, an example a scenario that we created with the, with the CPU metric. In this case, uh, 
it's applying a, a, a what if simulation model. It's it's very basic. For example, we are simulating that uh, in that data specifically. Uh, we're going to uh, be demanding. I can actually see the number. With uh, demanding ten times more uh, CPU resources and increasing uh, 10 times the capacity of the cloud to see how that metric moves on if we will fulfill the requirements uh, that maybe we're going to have by that time. So you can have all, all this. If you, if you don't specify actually a capacity and, uh, and uh, demand uh, value, it's going to project the metric just based on historical data. So. Here are the simulation uh, scenarios that we have. It's going to edit one so we can show you more in detail uh, what a scenario actually is. So here uh, in the scenario we have uh, two, um, a memory, a memory scenario that have actually uh, growth, the, the capacity and the demand uh, in a, in a percentage, and now we're going to move on with, uh, with the simulation to see uh, how all the, all the metrics that we have altered using the, the, the algorithm are going to be affected. We have one simulation there, so I'm going to go ahead and edit it. And there, if you can see, I'm going to pause there. So, as you can see, you have the simulation name, of course, and a small description. And you have, for example, all the, all the uh, time span that uh, this, this simulation is going to, 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 sh to show. So from where to where uh, are you going to retrieve the data? And the gray area that you see there uh, is actually what's, uh, what's going on right now, and after that, what is going to maybe happen if you introduce all these values into your metrics or that we, that we change in the infrastructure. For, for example, if you add more CPU or if you will require more, more CPU, that is graph right down there. So as you can see there, you can use all the, all the metadata is stored on the, on the Gnocchi metric to do, to do some filtering in order to graph uh, back there, uh, all the all the simulations. So, for example, right there, it's it's very it's very even. So, if you, for example, demand 10, 10 times more capacity, and you add ten times uh, more capacity, it's going to stay uh, really 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 flat. And for example, back there, if you see the if you see the memory, you can see that it's going to ah. For, I forgot the, the red line. It's uh, the threshold that we define for the for the for the capacity. So uh, you're going, you're seeing actually how the green line, that is actually the usage, uh, is going to reach our threshold in a future if we, we if we continue uh, moving that way with the consumption and with the hardware that we have. Okay, I guess, I guess this, there's no match on the video. Uh, like I said, it's just a basic horizon uh, panel uh, just, to, just to show the, the current features of the, of the API. And that's pretty much that I got for the presentation right now. So if you have any questions, I'll be pleased to answer them. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually, I don't know why I have an IKEA. Uh, for the for the capacity, uh, I I can show you that right now. So um, I have just a a, li a live environment, working environment of. Um, 
of showback chargeback and uh, and billing, but um, I can I can actually uh, get back to you. So uh, yeah. So uh, obviously you're using the, the metrics collected by Silometer and put into Gnocchi. Yeah. Database. Yes. Um, some people also use Monasca mm -hmm. for monitoring and collect their metrics in Monasca stores. So you think this approach could also work with the, the Monasca? Yeah, uh, the question was that many people maybe are using Monasca to collect right now the metrics. Uh, uh, so I think that's totally possible. Uh, we can, since we're open sourcing it, we can actually, since it's modular, the platform is modular, so we can actually uh, maybe uh, collaborate to code a Monasca API driver backend, so we can, we can work with it. Okay, so, okay, thank you all. Thank you for coming.